Have you ever went about your daily life wondering, why is this called this? Where did this come from? And then you start a Google search and you dive deep into a rabbit hole wondering, how did we get here? That's kind of what this video is going to be about because I'm going to be diving deep into different file extensions when it comes to video. Why is MP4 called MP4? What is MPEG? What does that stand for? What is AVI? All these common codecs that we probably know and use on a daily basis, how much do we actually know about it? And really, why should we use certain ones over other ones? So in this video, I'm going to be going over the details, some of the pros and cons of each file extension, as well as just the things you need to know about them. And also, if there's trivia, what does MKV stand for? That's one that I wasn't expecting. So be sure to watch to the end, leave any comments if you have any questions, and let's get into the video. So let's first talk about MP4. What does MP4 stand for? So MP4 stands for MPEG-4 Part 14. I have my notes here. And MP4 or MPEG-4 is not the only standard. There's MPEG-1, 2, 3, and there's a bunch of different ones that have different intricacies. So for example here, MPEG-1 came out in 1993, MPEG-2 came out in 96, MPEG-4 came out in 98. And this is the official logo of MPEG. If you didn't know this is what it looks like got a nice little film thing going into the m and then the g is spitting out all these numbers here and i think it just symbolizes how the video and audio are put together and then the zero and ones are probably pieces of code or a binary sequence i'm assuming but i want to pause momentarily and talk about the difference between a file extension such as mp4 and then an actual video codec so a file extension such as MP4 is the wrapper or the container for a video. You can kind of compare this to a candy bar. It's like the wrapper or the container of the candy bar. And then what's actually inside the video itself, the actual metadata, the information is the video codec. And this could be a lot of different things. There could be the H.264 video codec, could be the H.265 video codec. There's different things that can be inside of MP4, but the wrapper itself and the container is an MP4. And there's also the difference between MPEG-4 and MP4. MPEG-4 is the actual standard of putting the audio and video components together, where MP4 is just the extension, like I said, the wrapper. And interestingly enough, the MOV file extension uses the MPEG-4 video encoding. So there's the video encoding procedure that MPEG-4 is, but then you also have these file extensions such as .mov.mp4. Now let's talk about MP4 specifically. So when it comes to MP4, some of the pros in using the file extension and the associated video codecs is that it's a lossy file format. So what lossy means is that the video is compressed and some of the metadata is lost, but it still retains a high quality. Now to the normal person looking at the video, they probably won't notice the difference, but if you're a very detail-oriented video editor or an expert in video, you probably will notice some difference in the audio and video quality. Where there's other extensions such as .mov, .avi, which we'll get into a second, which is more lossy, it contains all of the metadata so you don't notice any quality depletion when it's exported in those formats. Now the reason why MP4 is very popular is it's great to use to upload online for uploading to maybe YouTube, social media, or even streaming. It's because it uses low bandwidth. It doesn't have as much metadata, so it makes streaming the file very easy. The other benefit of MP4 is that it can hold metadata. So if you have captions, different time codes associated with the information inside the file, this is held inside the file. So when you go and upload it or download it, like for example, if I import a video that's an MP4 into Premiere Pro and it has metadata like markers and comments in it, it's gonna carry that information with it. Now, one noticeable con when it comes to MP4 is that it's very hard to edit or to play back on your computer. It takes a lot of computer power to play back the video codec. And this is because it's highly compressed. So your computer has to work double time essentially uncompressing and trying to realize and understand what should be displayed on screen. This is why if you ever edit H.264 videos or MP4 videos inside Premiere Pro, typically you'll notice some lag in your timeline. Another con is that it doesn't support alpha channels. So going back to the lossless category here, lossless file formats support alpha channels, such as like lower thirds and different on-screen graphics that you can put over other video elements. It retains the transparency or the information that, hey, it's not just a black screen, that there's something there. 
but that's MP4. Now let's go into the next one. So the next one I wanted to cover is AVI. And AVI stands for, wait for it, Audio Video Interleave. This was created by Microsoft in 1992 as Windows standard video format. Now on the contrary to MP4, AVI you can actually use as a lossless file format. So if you have video and you wanna retain all the quality, you can export it out. This can also include alpha channels like we talked about earlier. But the downside to file extensions such as AVI is that they're gonna be larger file sizes. So you can expect, you know, gigabytes worth of information when you convert to an AVI video format. Now, although it was developed by Microsoft, you can still play back AVI videos on a Mac. I recommend using a third party platform such as VLC player. Typically, if you can't play it back in VLC, either the video file is corrupted or it's in a really weird format. So I recommend getting this if you need to convert or even just stream or play back video files that aren't native to your operating system. If you're interested, I'll leave it down in the link below. Feel free to go grab it. It's always nice to have just in case you need it. But I remember first experimenting with AVI back when I first started learning video editing on my home computer. I had a Windows XP PC back in the day and some of the file extensions were like .avi or .wmv, which we'll get to in a second. But I noticed always that AVI was like a very high quality version where WMV, it kind of had like a pixelation sometimes. It was a little lower quality. But I noticed like if I really wanted something solid, I would export it as an AVI. Now let's talk about MOV. So MOV stands for QuickTime Multimedia File Format. Apple developed this in 1991 and it became public in 2001. So for a while it is proprietary and then they released it to the public in 2001. And similar to AVI, it's lossless, so you can use this file extension to retain alpha channels. So this is great for lower thirds. I primarily use .movs when it comes to retaining transparency for lower thirds on screen graphics. And there's a lot of different formats that you can use when it comes to any of these really. But for MOV, I always like using the QuickTime Apple ProRes codex. This allows me to you know, export it into a really high quality and to reuse certain graphics in other projects. This can be great if you are working on a motion graphics pack, you wanna export it and reuse it maybe in Premiere Pro as like a lower third or a bumper. You can create elements and export it inside this setting and reuse these graphics because they're gonna be lossless, they're gonna be very high quality. One of the other things I wanted to mention about MOV is that I think inside Premiere Pro, it's one of the defaults when it comes to creating proxies. And this is why there's a difference between editing between MP4 and MOV files. So MOVs are a lot easier to edit with inside Premiere Pro because every frame is unique. When you play back the footage in your timeline, Premiere Pro doesn't have to think and try to figure out what should be displayed on screen. It's already right there for Premiere Pro to display it. Or say if you play back an MP4 file, it's gonna take Premiere Pro a second to realize and try to figure out what should display on screen because not every frame's unique. It's using the frames in the timeline to try to figure out what it should be at that given point in time. And when it comes to Premiere Pro, let's say if I have this file here and I want to make a proxy file out of it, you can always right click on it and then scroll down to proxy, create proxies. And you'll notice that the preset is already set to ProRes QuickTime Proxy. This is what I recommend for creating proxies inside Premiere Pro. If you wanna learn more about proxies, I did make a video all about proxies. I will link that up in the corner there. Feel free to go check that out. So now let's go into the next one. The next one is WMV and WMV stands for Windows Media Video. This was created by Microsoft in 1999. I talked a little bit about it before, but this is the one that I actually first got experience with when I first learned how to edit on a Windows XP. This is synonymous with like Windows Movie Maker. Now, interestingly enough, WMV files are high quality if you make them high quality. There are a few different options when it comes to WMV files. There's specifically, it can be lossless if you choose the Windows Media Video 9 lossless codec. But primarily, and at least when I was using it back in the day, it was more kind of like the MP4 equivalent, just with a higher file size. So. I primarily don't use it anymore, and obviously I'm on a Macintosh computer, and you can still play back on a Macintosh computer. Once again, you can use VLC player, or you can convert it. One of my favorite converters that I like to use is Wondershare Uni Converter. This can convert different video formats. 
but you can't really play it back natively in an Apple computer. You need to convert it or use a third party software. So that's one of the downsides with it is it's not that compatible when you leave the Windows ecosystem. All right, so now let's get into the next one. So the next one is called MKV. If you know what MKV is before I say what it is, leave a comment down below if you knew what this was. I didn't know what it was called, but MKV stands for Matroska Video. This was created in 2002 to be a free open standard alternative to MP4. And it's actually named after the Russian word Matroska, which means nesting doll. So if you've seen the Russian nesting dolls, that's where it comes from. So essentially it's like an MP4 alternative and it's higher quality because there is lossless settings in there. So, you know, you can use this if you want a higher quality video. It almost reminds me of like MOV a little bit, kind of like in between MOV and MP4 where it's more efficient, but it's not too big like an MOV file, but you still have settings where you can make it lossless. Now, one of the drawbacks with MKV is that it's less compatible, it's less popular. So, you know, if you plan to use it and upload it to different platforms, you might have compatibility issues. And one pro that I didn't really understand, but I guess is associated with MKV files is that it's more resilient to file corruption. But yeah, MKV is a weird one. I've always seen it around. And I never knew why is it, why MKV? Like, why not just MP4? I guess it does have its place if you need a higher quality video. I don't know, I just don't understand it. But if you want to learn more about all of these, I will link an article down below where you can learn more about the specifics. I didn't want to go too deep into this video, but just a brief overview of what all of these mean and some of the key takeaways. But that does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.